Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the upcoming hurricane season of 2021. We've updated a few of the maps in here and actually added another one that we didn't have before. So many new things are coming up within this video. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know how many major hurricanes do you expect to occur this year? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video. First things first, I need to educate everybody on all the different regions I will be talking about within this video. And first things first, we have our red region there, the main development region, or what we commonly call it the MDR. This is where most tropical systems begin. They're near the coast of Africa and they work their way all the way westward towards the Caribbean where they enter into the Caribbean region, which is our purple region. And from there, they can go to basically three different places. They can go to the Gulf of Mexico. They can dissipate within the Caribbean too, but we're not going to talk about that. Uh, that would be obvious. Uh, they can go out to sea or OTS for short, or they can head up the East Coast. And then everywhere in between is also a possibility. Now let's move on to our next graphic, and this is going to be our temperature anomalies there for the sea surface temperatures. This obviously has massive implications for the hurricane season. When there's warmer waters, those hurricanes have a much, much easier time developing. And then when there's below average sea surface temperatures, they have a much more challenging time developing. So that's the bigger difference there. As you can see along the eastern seaboard and the Gulf seaboard there, as you can see for the United States, we have above average, slightly above average sea surface temperatures expected for the hurricane season this year and surrounding regions there. And that's going to have massive implications, especially as these storms get close to this region and then close to the states, they could develop even further. Let's say we have a category one moving in, they could have a pretty easy time developing into a category two or three. Uh, which is just obviously extremely bad news. Now here is our even further above average sea surface temperature region. And as you can see, it's even closer to the coast, hugging the coast there, uh, especially if we have some above average temperatures around air temperatures that is uh, around above these regions. It's just going to help influence those sea surface temperatures uh, even further. It's just, it's just like uh, um, they obviously impact each other. The air temperature above can cause the sea surface temperatures below uh, to change. Uh, and we do expect some above average temperatures, air temperatures above that region, which has massive, massive implications for this upcoming hurricane season in effect, uh, which is how it impacts those sea surface temperatures around it. And again, those sea surface temperatures directly affect those storms that are moving over top. All right, now what we're going to do here is in a moment, we're going to talk about another above average sea surface temperature region and then some below average sea surface temperature regions as well. Then we're going to talk about the wind shear, the development, uh, and even the overall hurricane season forecast as well. All of those things are coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at another above average sea surface temperature region. As you can see, we have some slightly above average sea surface temperatures expected for our MDR or main development region there. And that is obviously going to have some massive impacts on this upcoming hurricane season. Uh, as those storms begin to develop, they're going to have an easier time. They're going to have a much easier time developing within that region as they're moving from the coast of Africa all the way towards the Caribbean. Those sea surface temperatures are going to help uh, just cause those uh, storms to just develop a little bit easier, especially if we have below average wind shear. We're going to take a look at that updated and brand new wind shear forecast in a moment, actually. But first off, as you can see, we have even further above average sea surface temperatures expected. Some more moderately above average sea surface temperatures, actually, matter of fact, within that red region. So this is obviously very bad news, and this is very similar to what we had last season, actually, which was a historic hurricane season. Uh, we had very similar setup as far as sea surface temperatures are concerned. We do have some below average sea surface temperature regions as well, though. Uh, we have to talk about those real quickly. Uh, first things first, uh, we're going to talk about here our uh, area there off Central America. We do have some below average sea surface temperatures around for that region, and that's going to have some implications. Obviously, some storms head a little bit further south than what is normally typical uh, into this region, and it's not usually considered very favorable, but especially if we have below average sea surface temperatures, that's not going to make this a very favorable region for hurricanes to come in and develop. So I do expect a lot of storms to head into this region and then actually end up breaking up 
and that actually is pretty typical as is for this region, but especially with those below average sea surface temperatures, they're not going to have an especially easy time developing here south of Jamaica whatsoever. Now we even have a second below average sea surface temperature region, and that's going to be north and west of, or sorry, north and east of Bermuda there. And this is an area where you'd be surprised, but we do have some named storms develop. We do have some hurricanes move up into this region and continue to develop. But if we do in fact have below average sea surface temperatures, that is going to hold back a bit of that development for sure, to say the least. So we're going to be watching for that as we move on as well uh, into the hurricane season to see if we don't have quite as many storms moving into this area and having an easy time sticking around. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to go ahead and move on towards the wind shear and then the development forecast and then the overall forecast. We're also going to show you guys that updated uh, amount of storms forecast. We did this again this year. Uh, we did that in a video a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to just show you guys that again if you missed that video. So we're going to take a look at all of these things in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look here at our wind shear forecast. And this is a brand new graphic that we actually have not shown before. And as you can see, we actually do expect below average wind shear. We had equal chances for the longest time. And finally, we've gone ahead and made the call uh, that we think there will be below average wind shear this upcoming season. The reason for that is I do expect us to go more in the La Nina direction rather than uh, neutral Enso. And even if there was a neutral Enso, uh, they also do from time to time have, uh, you know, less wind shear than what is normal some of the time as well. Uh, but I think especially if we see a La Nina develop, that is going to be a more than likely chance that we do end up seeing just uh, below average wind shear. Uh, and this will actually uh, cause more development uh, to be likely. All right, now let's get into that development forecast. Speaking of development, and we have below average south of Dominican Republic and Haiti as well as Jamaica. That's because... Well, first off, it's not even very good for development regardless, uh, typically. But also, I don't expect us to have above average sea surface temperatures in here. Matter of fact, I expect below average sea surface temperatures for most of this region. And that is the main reason why I expect below average development for this region. Now, to the north of here, slightly above average development for this region, for the Caribbean and all the way up the east coast, I think these storms are going to have a quite easy time developing within this region. Same story here for the Gulf of Mexico, except it's actually going to be even further above average development. Uh, I think this area is going to be excellent conditions for uh, development. Uh, so this is just going to be an area where we see many, many storms. First off, just form and develop in this region to begin with. But also we might see some weaker storms move into this area and then develop uh, very, very far actually. This is what we've seen for years and years and years. It's very typical. The Gulf of Mexico is already very good at de for development, but it could be even better than what is normal this year. Now, for the main development region, it's a wild card, but I will say this. If we do see the below average wind shear, this will certainly be a great area for development with the above average sea surface temperatures combined with the below average shear. That is a recipe for disaster. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and see uh, what ends up happening with that. For the overall forecast, first off, the East Coast, we have a wild card here. And this is always kind of a wild card region because it really just depends if storms even come up the East Coast or not. So even if there's great conditions for development, storms might not even head in that direction. That is what we see some of the time. So we're going to really just not even know whether storms will head that way or not until a week before they do or whatever. So this is going to be very challenging, if not impossible, to forecast in a longer range form. Now, for the Gulf of Mexico, we have highest risk and best chance for tropical activity. Uh, this is typical anyway, but especially this year, we have the above average sea surface temperatures, the above average development, uh, and I expect above average activity, therefore, as well. Now, above average activity is expected for the Caribbean here, according to all of these things in this forecast. Uh, that's going to be another great region for development. Now, to the south of there, not quite as favorable whatsoever there. To the south, below average sea surface temperatures, uh, just not really a good area to begin with, so I don't expect as favorable conditions to the south of that red region. Now, shear will dictate everything for the main development region, but I do expect below average shear at this point, so I think this will be a place where storms will also have a very easy time to develop as well. For that named storms forecast and hurricanes and major hurricanes, we expect 14 to 20 named storms, 7 to 11 hurricanes, and then 3 to 6 major hurricanes this upcoming hurricane season. 
Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6. That's the maximum I will go for a long-range forecast, so that is pretty high confidence if I do say so. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Benbenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry Lepan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Cap Bite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Garys, and John Qualisi, alongside Dwight Phelan as well. I always forget to say Dwight Phelan because John Qualisi used to be our last one, but now we've added Dwight Phelan. So thank you all for supporting the channel, but I would also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms one and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to comment to help the YouTube algorithm out, and be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.